Unfortunately, Lord Van Seeks, we don't have time for a proper introduction. No one is able to corroborate your claims. That's true. The omnibus was first wheeled out, both the storage compartment and the skylight were shut. Accordingly, I'm afraid to say we cannot establish with any certainty that this evidence is a result of tampering or not. Indeed, my lord, no doubt there was not a single person who saw fit to verify such things. What do you think? About the omnibus? Is there anything else unusual about the omnibus? My lord! Yes, counsel? There is one further inconsistency. A mark that surely could not have been present at the start of the trial. What? What in the devil's name are you going to say now? If you dare to betray me, little maggot, you'd better stop watching your back. Silence, McGilded. The court awaits the defense's clarification. Uh, this trial keeps swinging one way and then the other. I have no idea what's the truth and what's deception. What am I supposed to do? Believe here. I shall have to ask you to elaborate, counsel. What exactly is the alleged mark that you claim appeared at some point during the trial? Right here. If we consider that the victim fell through the skylight on the floor of the cabin, you would certainly expect to find signs of blood where he landed. But as far as I recall, this blood stain on the cabin floor was not there when the omnibus was first brought into the courtroom. Good Lord! Yes, I do believe you're correct, Counsel. Well said. Although, as advocate for the defense, one might say that was a very careless slip of the tongue. I believe that blood stain on the floor is a decisive piece of evidence. But if the question is whether that evidence is genuine, or whether it was unlawfully fabricated by someone, I feel compelled to admit there's at least a possibility that the evidence is fake. It's over! Mr. McGilded, I've done everything I possibly can, we can to cooperate with the court, but it is all over now. But you're the defendant! It is over, I tell you! Yikes! Memory, recollection, what people think they saw, it is all a nonsense! Facts are what counts! And the fact is, that blood stain is there now! Well, I know over the course of this desperate trial, long and extremely drawn out as it has been, that good for nothing Reaper the Bailey has failed to present any decisive evidence at all! Uh, I'm scandalized, so I am. I thought better of Lord Van Zeeks. Well, my lord! I must concur with the defendant that unaffirmed recollections of an individual can't stand as evidence. At this moment in time, the particular blood stain in question is very much in existence, and in the absence of any credible method by which to prove its alleged previous non-existence. I regret to say it would be improper to, for this trial to continue. Your lordship can't be serious. Lord Van Zeeks, what is your position? The prosecution, my lord, has no further witnesses or evidence to present. He got off. This isn't good, though. Very well. In that case, as I believe we have explored every possible avenue in this matter, I shall proceed in my adjudication. adjudication. As a formality, I am of course obliged to confirm with the defense first. 
formality. As things stand at the moment, it would seem Mr. McGilded will be found not guilty. This can't be right! Which would mean we've won. This isn't deserved! Is it really all right for the trial to come to an end now with all these unexplained inconsistencies? Counsel for the defense, your closing statement, please. Yes, my lord. The defense believes... No, I didn't mean to choose that! As Mr. McGilded's legal representative... There's not enough evidence! I can't breathe. The air in here is stifling. But I'm this man's defense lawyer. There's only one thing I can say in this situation. I believe the defendant, Ms. Magnus McGilded, is innocent of the allegations. I didn't mean to press that! Thank you, counsel. It doesn't matter, but I didn't mean to pick that. Here's to you, mighty bunnies, friend. And the most abject closing I have yet to hear in a court of law. Order! Order! <laughs> that is not the laugh of an innocent man. Oh, it was a grand decision to appoint you as my lawyer, so it was. A grand decision. You saved one of London's most influential gentlemen, fella. You should be proud of yourself. Here, have this for your troubles. Aye. Your job here is done, fella, and some fine work you've done, so you have. What do you mean? It is just as the right honorable gentleman so simply put it before. The trial can't go on anymore. And your closing statement there was, how did he put it now? Nothing more than a formality. <laughs> I really don't know what to make of all this. Is evidence we've seen genuine, or is it fake? Lordship would be fuming. Any unsightly rubbish would be this should be disposed of promptly, as I said. Mr. Gimmick, you're always guilty of something. You here, mark my words. I feel terribly ashamed that I ever doubted that lovely man who gave us the lovely park. Now that proceedings have unfolded in this way, I'm compelled to declare a premature end to this trial. Furthermore, the court must accept the defendant's plea. I thank you kindly, my lord. I hereby pronounce the verdict of this court. But we still haven't determined if the blood stain in the omnibus is genuine or not. We don't know if these witnesses are telling the truth or a pack of lies. We have no idea about the truth. Lord Van Zeeks, my lord, the case made by the prosecution was flawed, plain and simple. If indeed the omnibus presented an evidence was tampered with, the prosecution is at fault for allowing such a disgraceful perversion of justice to take place. My sincerest apologies, my lord. But wait! When we were evacuated from the courtroom, Lord Van Zeeks ordered the evidence to be secured. I'm afraid the prosecution cannot shun responsibility in this matter. That's so unfair! The culpability of the defendant has not, at the present time, been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to proffer judgment. What? Well, Lord Van Vicks, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fellow, I 
couldn't have asked for a better defense. You mean to tell me this has all been a grand waste of time? It is a law of the land, my good man. If you'd like to pursue this matter further, you can always go ahead and try and change the law. Magnus McGilded. Good grief! You've more to say to me, have you? Just one thing. A warning. This is far from over. Well, something to be looking forward to, then. <laughs> I hereby pronounce the defendant, Mr. Magnus von Gilded, Gilded, not guilty. We didn't deserve this. I can't believe it! This is an outrage! They should have examined the evidence more. What are you talking about? The man's been clear. He's innocent. No, he's not. No, he's not. With the courtroom in pandemonium for the second time that day, the judge delivered his verdict. And my first ever trial in Great Britain came to an abrupt end. With the defendant being found not guilty, ostensibly a victory for us. No, it's not. That certainly was a long trial. Yes, it was. Your first ever trial on foreign soil and your first victory. It was a wonderful performance. My heartfelt congratulations. And to you, Mr. Zato, thank you for your assistance. I suppose we should be happy. No, there's no happiness here. The trouble is, we're still completely in the dark about what actually happened. Or well, we didn't have enough time. But isn't it wrong? I mean, who's actually responsible for Mr. Mason's death? We don't even know that! The sole aim of the defense is to obtain a verdict that exonerates the defendant. You carried out your duty to perfection. Aye, that you did. Mr. McGilded! And that girl's with him, too. Well, it seems the stories are true. What stories? About the six enormous fireworks they do be letting off whenever there's a guilt verdict of not guilty. I'm sure you must have seen them now. Spectacular, wouldn't you say? Definitely. I heard it was a sight to behold, and to be sure it was. And I've you to thank, I suppose, for having an opportunity to see it. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I'm not sure I really did anything. What on earth are you saying, fella? How did I walk here a free man, then? I don't think it was so much thanks to me as down to your planning. You're a straight-talking fella, aren't you? I must say, you had me straight in the head there once or twice. But you're young and headstrong. <laughs> and it is water under the bridge. Congratulations, Mr. McGilden, on having your name cleared. But nothing's resolved. There's only one thing that matters to me. Oh? Aye. They've all seen that I didn't do that odious and absent indeed. Tis grand, is it not? I suppose it is. Now the fine fellas of Scotland Yard can take matters in hand and sort out any wee details. They'll see it for what it is. They'll get to the truth. I've absolute faith in them, so I have. After all, I do be providing a good number of their wages with all the taxes I pay. <laughs> it's not that funny. So then, as we agreed beforehand, 
One thousand guineas for your troubles, fella. Oh, no, no, no. I couldn't have possibly accept that much. Ada be weast. You're a humble person, are you from the east? Well, if you insist. Have this, still and all, you deserve a reward. Mr. Magnus McGillard. Everything is ready, sir. If you'd like to follow me into the courtroom. In the courtroom? What's this, officer? Tis sooner than I was led to believe. Ah, but it's not convenient, sir. There are some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making tracks now. Tis time for the inspection. What inspection? They're gonna examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. They're going to examine it again? Now? Naturally, I'm under no obligation to take part in any of more of this matter now. But as an upstanding member of London society, I do be doing my best to help whatever I can. It is a gentleman's duty, so it is. So then, fare thee well. It was an absolute pleasure meet you. I hope you have a whale of a time while you're studying here in Great Britain. And there he goes, a free man. Oh, I forgot she was here, too. Not again. Don't move! Or as I want to say, get a move on. She really does take forever to load that thing. Mrs. Strahd, would you mind putting that thing down? You're a grown-up. Sorry. And I hate all grown-ups. There you are. Uh, who are you? Naughty, naughty, running off like that. Is this some kind of picnic? Who's this little girl now? I'm taking with you, that with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Ha! Do you want to play? You won't beat me. You bring a smoke grenade launcher, she brings a frickin' bazooka. Friggin' bazooka. Uh, um, excuse me, but... Who are you? Oh, good day to you. I'm, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. The inventor? Normal smoke grenades are so dull, don't you agree? White, white, more white! If it be shrouded in smoke, it should be at least a pretty color, I thought to myself. Do we have to be shrouded in smoke, though? At all? I just took my eyes off it for a moment whilst I was changing into a different omnibus and she pitched it. Luckily, I fitted it with a telegraphic beacon. A tele what's it what? I have no idea what she's talking about. Anyway, you're coming with me now. Back to my laboratory. What? What for? To apologize, of course, silly, to my technician. You mean, say sorry. You must say sorry when you've done something wrong. Surely an adult has told you that before. How'd it go? <laughs> I don't listen to no adults. Come along then, follow me. Fine, have it your way. A oh, good, you see, I knew you'd want to do the right thing in the end. I'm fairly sure that what she wants is to not get shot by that massive gun of yours. We'll be leaving now, then. Bye-bye. I'm so sorry for all the fuss. She was a lively one. Well, you think perhaps we ought to be on our way now, too? You're right, but... Where to? Oh! We haven't had time to find a place to stay. I mean, sooner than we arrived in London, we had to rush here. All our traveling cases are still with the bailiff. I was originally planning to spend today in search of lodgings, but this late hour of the day, I'm afraid we may be out of luck. Don't worry though, I have a plan. The worst comes to worst, I've heard of a lovely park where we could spend the night. 
Please tell me you're not thinking of McGilda Park. I know it may be a little chilly at this time of year, but our youthfulness will see us through. I'm not so sure about that. I think a midwinter London might freeze a young person solid just as easy as an elderly one. That doesn't sound agreeable. Now I'm starting to regret turning Mr. McGilda down. That 1,000 guineas would have paid for a lovely warm room. Or mansion. That money we don't need. The trial to determine my worthiness for the study tour was over by the end of the first day in London. However, as we were soon to learn, there were more trying times ahead, just as the Reaper of the Bailey had warned. The case was far from over. What the heck? What's going on? Get the fire brigade! Water! Holy Water! cow! What? How did this happen? I don't know, sir. By the time I got here, it was already engulfed. No one was supposed to be allowed in here before we started investigating. <gasps> Someone's inside. three is done. I'll see you guys next time.